Shelby. Today is Thursday, August 30th, and I have a number of points to address. Point number one, keys. I guess you could say that keys are the key to storytelling, especially the kind of keys that are like in, you know, literature and even the symbolic ones are cool. It's like they're the, they're the potential energy that builds and builds and builds throughout an adventure and then you finally get to the door that it opens, be it symbolic or not. and everything falls into place. It's one of the most incredible experiences when you're reading a book, wouldn't you agree? When suddenly everything makes sense and it's residing on one little piece of information. Well, I mean, sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's really annoying. Like in some mysteries, I guess you could say. And then there are the key words that help you to understand, you know, phrases and symbolism and metaphors, similes, other tropes, other literary literary devices. I can speak English because I'm going to be an English major, but I really don't think you want me to go into a lecture today. But also, I just wanted to point out that if you were a key, you'd probably get lost. And now I'm going to move on to point number two. You know, it's entirely unfair that you got to talk about both your favorite books and your favorite authors, so I think it's my turn. But since I've spent such a long time talking about the awesomeness of keys, I'm just going to do this really fast blitzkrieg of book stuff. So, three, two, one, go. Book number one, Gone, by Michael Grant. Now you say that it's a sci-fi novel, but I highly disagree. Actually, it is a dystopian novel. Kind of like Lord of the Flies, but with superheroes. So, it's it's a community of 15-year-olds having to remake their entire society, which is sort of what Lord of the Flies is all about. Except, these people can shoot lights out of their hands. It's... cool difference. Second favorite book, Inkheart by Cornelia Funk. Look at its binding, you poor thing. Dustfinger is played around with so much in this series, it's really, really annoying, but the first book is pretty darn cool. I discovered in elementary school, and it has stuck with me ever since. Three, my two favorite sci-fi books. You've got Dune by Frank Herbert and Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game. It just so happens that it's awesome enough for both of us to like it. Four. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. As to number five, since I don't have The Fault in Our Stars with me, or a number of my favorite books, I'm just going to have to resort to a book that I'm almost finished with, Tolkien's The Hobbit. I love this book and I can't wait to finish it so that I can do a vlog on, you know, how it was, how the experience was. I'm, I'm almost done. I guess if you consider that to be almost. As to my question about what kind of non-living thing I would be, I'd have to be some sort of a rock. Like, I could be part of a mountainside, and I could get to watch the development of human history, and even before humans, I'd, I'd be able to know what actually happened. And that would be really cool, and even when, you know, the effects of erosion happened, I could get blown across the world, and I could see new cultures, new things. Um, and then after a while, I mean, People use minerals to make things. I could be the mineral that's in paint. And I could be on the side of a red telephone box in London. And, or I could be part of metalworking. Um, I could be the copper wire in a secret surface agent's earphone. That would be interesting. That would be quite an adventure, don't you think? Or better yet, I could be the mineral and ink from a printer shop. I could have been one of the original publications of Edgar Allan Poe's poetry. Or one of the weekly clippings of Charles Dickens. Any way I see it, being a rock's the way to go. Point three. What kind of fish would I be? Hmm. A freshman! But since I'm already that kind of fish, I guess you want me to actually answer your question. First off, let me clear something up in your question. Dolphins and whales, although they live in water, they are mammals. I know that you know this, and that's why you were saying I'm going to count them anyways, but I just want to clear up the fact that they are mammals, therefore they cannot be classified as fish. So if we want to include dolphins and whales in this question, 
we need to correct it and say, what kind of sea creature would you be? If I have to answer about a fish, to be honest with you, the first thing that I thought of was a hankler fish. But since that's not technically a fish, I'd say a nurse shark or one of those brightly colored mandarin fish. But since we're going to be including mammals, my heart goes out to otters. And to be entirely honest with you, otters remind me of Gwen the Martin in Inkheart. So, I'm a nerd. It happens. And so my question to you is this. If you could be any joke, what would you be? I'm sorry that that was so long. I had a lot to talk about. But I think we should set up some rules about this. Your episodes seem to be a little bit short, and mine seem to be a little bit long. So how about we make it this way? More than three minutes, less than five. Sound good to you? I guess I'll find out soon, because you're going to be driving up tomorrow to see me. Yay, Labor Day! So I guess I'll see you tomorrow evening. Bye!